Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started on this one. Uh, buckle up. We're going to go for a fun ride. Uh, we're going to get these bearings pressed in this differential, get these uh, carrier bearings uh, pressed onto the LSD, set up that ring gear, and get this uh, rear end on its way. Okay, this is the first part of what gets done on the assembly process, and that is pressing the bearings into this differential case. This here is an, an Arbor Press from 1942 electric boat. It's a pretty cool machine. Um, it works mechanically, and uh, it's 10 ton, and serves the purpose of what we're getting ready to do here. And uh, these are our pushers that we've uh, made, and they are putty mod orange, so we know exactly what we're grabbing every time. That's taken care of. Now we'll get to the next phase. Okay, we have the outside bearing installed, lubricated, ready to go. The seal area is lubricated as well. We're going to go ahead and replace that uh, worn uh, slinger washer with this new one. And here's our Honda seal for the pinion. And uh, we'll get this pressed all into place and set, and we'll carry on from there. Pressing the seal. Just getting it just the right depth. Perfection. Sizing up the shim before I press that bearing on so I have a starting point. Right, we got the next part of the job done here and that was installing the ring gear on the LSD. I've done that and I've also went ahead and balanced it out and this is kind of a procedure that only very few people do. They'll check run out and things like that but they really don't go for balancing and I do. I, I balance every rear end and balancing keeps these things running a lot cooler when you have a really smooth mesh and everything is just gliding along with the least amount of friction, you're going to have the best result. And we have an excellent result here after balancing. We're only at eh, maybe a half thousandths, and that's it. I mean, the factory allows two thousandths uh, on that and uh, on the run out, but what we do is we just take it to another level and we balance this thing so we can get it within, like this today, a half thousandth. Usually I get it in a half to a thousandth and uh, that's really excellent. But today we got a half thousandth, so that's super excellent. And uh, I will carry on with this video here shortly when we start setting up the pinion and looking for our pattern and see what we get. Okay, we're getting ready to do our first setup here, check our pattern. And before we do that, we do some prep work here. Um, the nuts got grease on it so that these threads stay nice and, and true without any issues. Uh, we lubricated our bearing, um, lubricated our race. Uh, this is your old crush tube. There's the putty mod solid steel sleeve. This is your input flange. Uh, that's greased and the spline is greased. Everything has lubrication on it. Now here's a little FYI for you guys that are DIY kind of people. Um, you don't need to put this thing in right now. Uh, it's not necessary. Uh, you don't want to really put it in until you are ready for final fitment because you can take this thing apart and put it back together much easier. You can set the load on the bearing without that piece. That piece is just so that once it's in a vehicle, it sets and keeps that load and it's not necessary to be done on the bench. And of course, use a sacrificial nut washer while you're working on your setup uh, and don't use your good stuff until you're actually ready to do your final fitment. 
All right, here we go. Okay, guys, this here is an inch pound torque wrench, wand style. They're very accurate and do a great job for this particular procedure. What we're doing is we're checking the load on them uh, pinion bearings. Right now we're at about 12 inch pounds, which is uh, textbook perfect. And there's no crush tube in this thing right now, but we have this set up and I just wanted to show you how it's done so you know where you're supposed to be at for your load. And we're going to, uh, at this point, take it apart, uh, you know, take it, put it up, back up in the vise, put the carrier in it and check our pattern, see what we got. And then we'll adjust that shim on the pinion as necessary, um, you know, to uh, set that perfect pattern. And, uh, and that's what we'll do from there. We'll take it from that point. This is really where the fun part begins. Okay, we have our dial indicator set up. I've already set the backlash. And you can see there, it's at 3 thousandths is where we set it at. Now that's consistent around this gear because of that uh, balancing we had done earlier. So we got a super consistent backlash within just tenths of any part of this gear, any one part I, I put this indicator on, it's within tenths of that 3 thousandths. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna white it up with some dye and uh, we're gonna check our pattern, see what we got. And uh, hold on, we're gonna get to that right now. Okay, I'll go ahead and check that pattern now after we dive that gear up. And we'll see what we got. Sorry for the shoddy video, I'm not very professional at this. And that looks really good. She's a little low, so we're probably going to adjust that up some. But um, as for performance, you want that pattern to be on a little like to the lower side of that gear um, and then towards the middle, just like you're seeing this. I'm gonna probably move this shim eh, maybe another half a thousandths or so and uh, just to get it up just a little bit more. Uh, this is a performance pattern. This is the strongest part of that gear. You see how really great that is? Like I said, I'm just gonna move that maybe, maybe a half a thousandths. And, uh, but yeah, I'm real happy with that. We're gonna have a, a super nice differential here, a really super nice uh, setup. Okay, we're getting ready to push the pinion out so we can change that shim and uh, set up the next uh, shim and see if we can get that pattern just a little bit better than what it is. change out now that we got that bearing off. There you go, you can see what moving this pinion just a little bit does. I moved it just a little over a half thousandths, and of course I, I definitely moved it in the wrong direction. You, you can see the, the pattern really went to boom. So uh, we're gonna go ahead, and that's a technical term by the way, uh, and pull that shim out, and we're gonna go in the opposite direction. See what we get. Here we are back in the arbor press again. shim will make our, our differential happy. I love mechanical stuff, don't you? Check it again. Here we are getting that set back up so we can check the pattern again. It's time consuming, you know, in and out, in and out, on and off, press in, press out, press in again. But that's how it goes when you build one of these things. Patience. All right, we're back set up. Backlash is set again, 3000s. I'm gonna go ahead and pattern this thing up and see what we have. Yeah, it looks like the fourth time was a charm. Now we got it. And we got a beautiful pattern here, real full contact. And uh, everything looks great, sounds great. And at this point now, we're gonna go ahead and take it apart 
and uh, start setting up that putty box solid steel sleeve next. Oh boy, here we go. We're ready now to set the putty mod solid steel sleeve. Right there. We're turned right now to get an initial fitment. We're gonna take it from there. Probably go in and out of the lathe a few times to be cut and uh, you know, made perfect so we get that perfect uh, pinion load on that uh, input flange. And if you're wondering what this is, I'm suffering with a cold right now. So this is my uh, dispenser for tissues because uh, I've gone through two rolls now blowing my nose like crazy and uh, so yeah that's a thing and uh, so if you want to put that in your bathroom that's a great idea you know I don't know how how uh, some people will feel about that but I would mind having that for a toilet paper dispenser pretty cool <laughs> all right well we'll see you guys tomorrow we'll get on this again and, uh, and make this, uh, this rear end a whole rear end here probably tomorrow.